Hi, my name is Philip Davis. Thank you for letting us present our work here today. I'm here to talk about our ASIC implementation of a cross-frequency coupling algorithm for EG signal processing. I'm going to talk about our ASIC implementation of a CFC algorithm, specifically the modulation index. This ASIC calculates the CFC metric directly from digitized EG signals. Interactions between different frequency ranges have been studied in neural processing and are believed to be how information is processed and controlled in the brain. The modulation index specifically looks at the phase of the low frequency signal modulating the amplitude of the high frequency signals. An EEG is thought that the low frequency signals represent global processing or communications and that the high frequency signals represent more local processing of stimuli or information. The phase of the low frequency signal might suppress some stimuli or, or processing while boosting others. The advantage of directly computing the modulation index on a chip is that first of all the raw EEG does not have to be stored in memory. Storing the raw EEG, EEG data over a couple of hours or days can easily start to take up a lot of space. Having it on a chip also allows for more modulation index data to be calculated and collected. Um, instead of a subject having to sit in a lab, they'll be able to walk around with our CFC system. Another important aspect is that real-time cross-frequency coupling data can be collected, which may be useful for brain-computer interfaces or other applications. Here we focus on the digital signal processing portion of this project. Ultimately we'll want to combine it with the sensor amplifier and analog to digital converter and then store the information in memory to transmit it to a phone. To our knowledge this is the first time this cross-frequency coupling algorithm has been implemented in hardware. The system design is designed in Verilog and then tested and verified in an FPGA. Test signals were loaded into a signal generator and then passed through an analog to digital converter and then to our FPGA. From there we actually just passed it the computed CFC values to a laptop for ver verification instead of the ADC. Um, after the design was converted to an ASIC based on IBM 0.18 or 0.18 micrometer technology. Okay. Now I'll talk about the details behind the modulation index. This cross frequency coupling algorithm measures how much the phase of the low frequency band modulates the amplitude in the high frequency bands. To find this, first the raw digitized EEG signal is bandpass filtered to a low and high frequency range. The low frequency range is usually less than 30 Hz with a bandwidth of about 4 Hz. Usually something like 48 Hz or 8 to 12 Hz ranges are looked at. The high frequency ranges between 30 and 200 Hz are usually used with larger bandwidth more in the 10 Hz range. After the bandpass filtering, both signals are then passed through a Hilbert transform to create an analytic to create analytic signals for each. The Hilbert filter creates a 90 degree phase shift in the signal, which allows for the instantaneous phase and amplitude to be calculated. The phase of the low frequency signal is then taken while the instantaneous amplitude of the high frequency signal is calculated. Once we have this instantaneous phase and amplitude, they're combined in the complex time series Z of T, as we see in the first bullet. Taking a time window of one second here worth of samples, the mean and absolute value of Z of T is calculated. And this results in what is called MRA. Um, normally, a surrogate distribution of MRA values are computed where either the high frequency amplitude or low frequency phase is randomly shifted and then these calculations are redone 
this results in a distribution and from the set of randomly shuffled MRA values where the mean and standard deviation are calculated and used to find the final M value of the system which indicates how far the real value you calculated is from data where no cross-frequency coupling is present. Because of the size constraints, only the MRA values are calculated in our ASIC. However, tests on synthetic signals show that pretty similar results between MRA and M. In the figure on the right, we see an example of a synthetic cross-frequency coupling signal. You can see that the high-frequency amplitude is higher at certain portions of the low-frequency signal and the lower in the rest. And the second plot is a high frequency band, band pass signal and, it, and its instantaneous amplitude in blue. The third and fourth plots show the band pass filter, filtered low frequency signals and in instantaneous phase. Here's a block diagram of our system that was designed in hardware and implemented in the ASIC. First, the digitized EG signals pass through low and high frequency band filters. Next, each passes through the Hilbert filter and the instantaneous phase and amplitude are calculated for low and high frequency ranges. These values are then computed in the second to last block and the mean and absolute values are then computed over one second's worth of data. When analysis is performed on a computer, Several low and high frequency ranges are usually taken and the MRA calculated for each combination of them. Due to space constraints on the chip, only one combination was used here. Hopefully in our next iteration we can optimize some aspects of the chip and use more combinations of frequency ranges. Now we look more closely at the bandpass filter. We're using 48 hertz for the low frequency range 40 to 55 hertz for the high frequency range. Filters were designed using MATLAB's FDA tool. 8-bit um, EG signals are taken and passed through each of these filters. We're using an 80-tap FIR filter um, because of the narrow bandwidth required and equal filter lengths are used for both to try to match the group delays of the two signals so they stay aligned. Each bandpass filter filtered signal is then passed through the Hilbert filter and the delay block so that matches in so that matches the filter group delay in both and the signals still stay aligned. Um, the filter was also designed and converted to Verilog using FDA tool in MATLAB. From there the instantaneous amplitude and phase is calculated using Cortic. Cortic stands for Coordinate Rotation Digital Computer is an effective or efficient method to calculate trig functions when hardware multipliers are not or when hardware multipliers are unavailable. It is needed for almost every calculation except for the filters and the modulation index algorithm. It's used for the phase and the magnitude, absolute value and exponential calculations. Um, this cortic algorithm was found and modified from the source two so that it could return values in the range of plus or minus pi. Uh, this algorithm has been thoroughly tested and verified in MATLAB on synthetic signals. We migrated the design to Xilinx ISE using Verilog and tested the implementation in hardware on a Spartan 3 FPGA. Test signals were created in MATLAB and loaded into a signal generator and the results verified also in MATLAB. We used a sampling rate of 512 Hz and calculated the modulation index on one second windows. Here's an overview of our ASIC synthesis results. Once again we're using IBM 0.18 micrometer CMOS technology. Our chipper operates at 1.8 volts and runs calculations using a 409 kHz clock. Um, input samples are taken at 512 Hz, and here we can see that the total area is about 
2.11 millimeters squared and the total power used is 191.3 milliwatts. This is quite a bit of power and we hope to improve this by optimizing Cordic further in subsequent designs. Um, this Cordic is also taking up a large portion of the chip which we hope to optimize later. Now we see the details behind the ASIC implementation. It was implemented using Cadence RTL compiler and SOC encounter. The final chip has a 3 by 3 millimeter area including the pad ring and contains 40,000 cells of the 0.18 micrometer standard cell library. Once again the total area was 2.11 millimeter squared and we see the chip on the right. Um, we see the size of the the digital components overlaying on it, and we can see that Cordic is taking up the majority of the chip real estate. So now we compare our chip's performance to two others that have been used in seizure detection. Uh, the one in three uses phase phase coupling, which is kind of similar to some cross frequency coupling algorithms. Um, we see again that our chip uses a greater amount of power, but has the lowest clock speed. And now we look at the modulation index raw values versus signal to noise ratio and test signals. We tested the effect of noise on this cross frequency coupling algorithm by creating test signals with a constant cross frequency coupling value but varying the amounts of signal to noise ratio present. Um, and that's for individual test. So for each test signal, we'll add increasingly more amounts of signal to noise ratio, or SNR. Um, we range the signal to noise ratio from 0 0.001 to 200 dB, and then MRA was calculated over the entire test signal, and then averaged. And the, right, the plot on the right compares the simulated and FPGA implementation results, and the difference you see between the gap between the two lines is from the fixed point arithmetic and the cortic algorithm. And we also can see here that the cross frequency coupling algorithm is affected a bit or quite a bit by noise in the signal. So to conclude, um, we have presented a digital implementation of a cross frequency coupling algorithm. It was designed, simulated, and tested on a Spartan 3 FPGA and then migra migrated to silicon using an IBM 0.18 micrometer CMOS process. Uh, this is the first step in creating a mobile device capable of collecting and monitoring real-time cross-frequency coupling data. We are currently testing the ASIC in the lab. We designed and ordered a custom PCB for this application. Once we have it operational, we can start on the mobile test. For the next iteration of ASIC, we want to reduce the power consumption and chip size by optimizing the Cordic algorithm. Um, we are also going to test lower order IIR, IIR filters. Um, the infinite impulse response filters are nonlinear on the band pass, but we are using such narrow bands that this might not affect the results significantly versus the size power savings that it creates, but this must be verified first. Um, once this is complete, we can start our final mobile application test. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please email me at pdavis at nmsu.edu or drtang at wtang at nmsu.edu. Then here's a list of the references in this presentation. Thank you very much.